The Battlefield games have always liked to do things differently to Call of Duty, and that's largely why the series is still going strong. However, whilst that strategy has paid dividends in terms of its distinctive multiplayer mode, which I'll be reviewing separately, EA has been far less successful when it comes to putting together a halfway decent single player campaign, and so I was expecting to wade through yet another underdeveloped stodgy single player shit festival along similar lines to the last few Medal of Honor games. I can honestly say that I could not have been more wrong. The campaign is split up into five war stories, each starring a different protagonist highlighting the various theatres and machinery of World War One. War story number one, or as I like to call it, having a tank. An Englishman, an Irishman and a Scotsman jump into Black Bess. It may sound like the setup for an astonishingly politically incorrect gag, but it's also basically what you'll be doing in the first war story. You play as the Englishman, while a Begbie from Trainspotting impersonator plays your stereotypical shouty Scottish commanding officer. Black Bess, by the way, is your hardy little tank in which you get to act as the pilot and man the guns. The intro text explains that these tanks were real beasts, but were extremely unreliable. This pans out during the mission, where you'll at first be blasting gun emplacements and liquidising the Bosch with your cannons, whilst occasionally holding X to affect repairs. You then get kicked out to scout ahead, which involves a few nice little stealth incursions into enemy settlements. Your job here is to clear out the majority of the enemy forces before Black Bess swoops in to claim all the glory after the real work's done. You then get to take to horseback on a mission to find spark plugs for the beast before rounding off with an epic blast everything finale. This is by far the longest of the five war stories, but sadly not the best of them. The tone of this story is reminiscent of a navel-gazing Spielberg film, which makes the jump to the second world war story all the more jarring. Here, your cast is a lippy American chancer who screws an evil British toff out of his new plane, which you then rather implausibly take for a spin through various war scenarios with your hapless English co-pilot Wilson. This story is exponentially more fun than the first. What starts off as an extended tutorial to get to grips with the at first unwieldy flying controls, for which dice are infamous, quickly progresses to an ace combat style arcade shooter which sees you taking down enemy fighters and bombers. Whereas the first story was relatively grounded in reality, this one ends with our heroes crash landing onto a German airship. It's incredibly good fun, the characters are a pleasure to play with, and even the flying felt great once I got to grips with it. The third mission goes back to navel gazing, all bit with an Italian soldier in a full suit of armour mowing down a sea of enemies with an Ar Arnie style minigun. This story felt most reminiscent of Call of Duty in terms of gameplay, where story 4, which puts her into the boots of an old Australian soldier in Gallipoli, harks back to the original, and best, Medal of Honour particularly in its initial beach landing. The fifth and final story gives you control of the Bedouin under the command of Lawrence of Arabia. This gives us flashbacks of Metal Gear Solid V with its relatively open desert setting, which tasks you with infiltrating a number of settlements on horseback or dodging tanks. While all five war stories are fun, the second is head and shoulders the best, followed by the fifth, then the fourth, then the third, then the first. What's really interesting about Battlefield 1's single player campaign is it's the first that's actually felt like it can single-handedly justify the existence of the game. Several Call of Duties, even the recent ones, have had highly enjoyable campaigns, but this is something that Battlefield has struggled with. While Bad Company 2 is always lauded, it did have its own issues in single player. Battlefield 3 looked nice, but was achingly dull, whereas Battlefield 4 was one giant glitch, and I, I was in fact never able to complete it because it was so broken. This makes Battlefield 1's campaign something of a shocker. The gunplay is rock solid, the first person shooter controls are slick and reliable, and the mission design easily bests the last couple of CODs. Graphically, need I say, the game is gorgeous, and typically from DICE, really nicely optimised for the PC. The artistic design shouldn't be overlooked either. On several occasions, I found myself admiring the view, whether that was of flaming airships, crisscrossing searchlights above the trenches, or a fleet of allied ships firing artillery shells into my face. Anyone who's played a recent Battlefield in multiplayer will also be aware that DICE are no slouches when it comes to sound design, with the usual crisp cracks of gunfire accompanied by a superb orchestral score that is honestly of cinematic quality. That's not to say there aren't problems, the map design could certainly have been tighter, particularly as a few of the more open world maps can be largely bypassed by just sprinting around their outer edges. There are also one or two minor glitches and a touch of repetitiveness within each of the stories, which have a propensity to get you to repeat certain objectives, presumably to pad the fairly short running time. I've recommended some Call of Duty games purely on the strength of their campaigns, but this is the first time that I can recommend a Battlefield game purely after playing the single player mode. That said, the price is currently on the steep side if you're absolutely certain that the multiplayer won't interest you. However, if you're interested in the PC or X-Bone versions, here's a potentially money-saving suggestion. If you grab a one-month subscription to Origin or EA Access respectively for $5 or £4, and use the first six hours of the included 10-hour trial to play through the campaign, you can then use the rest of the trial to check out the multiplayer, or even run through the campaign again to find the collectibles. I'll be reviewing the multiplayer in a separate bit video, but for now, I'm giving the single player campaign of Battlefield 1 a rock solid 80%, while it's certainly not in danger of being ranked with the very finest first person shooters that gaming has bestowed upon us, it is without question Battlefield's finest hour.